Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic, fun with proof theory edition. In this video and in the ones to come, we're going to be extending our propositional proof theory with rules that cover identity and the quantifiers. So all of the propositional stuff is the same. We already know how to deal with atoms, conjunctions, disjunctions, negations, conditionals. All we need to do is say, what do we do with the new kind of logical apparatus that we have defined? Now, the quantifiers are each going to get an elimination rule and an introduction rule. And for each of the quantifiers, one of those is going to be easy. The other one's going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to set aside the quantifier rules for now and first look at, at, the, first look at identity. So there are a couple of things to know about identity. The reason that we highlight it out as a special, we give it a special symbol, we include it as a special part of our logical language if we are dealing with a language with identity. And that's because it is a particular, as a relation, it has particular properties. First of all, it is reflexive. Every object is identical to itself. I am identical to Dr. Logic. It's pretty remarkable. More importantly, nobody else is. Identity is also symmetric. If object one is identical to object two, then object two is identical to object one. In fact, they are one and the same. So if Clark Kent is the same as Superman, then Superman is the same as Clark Kent. Finally, identity is transitive. If object one is identical to object two, and object two is identical to object three, then in fact, the first one was identical to the second one. So if you'd like to have a good Trinitarian argument, if God the Father is identical to God and God is identical to God the Son, then God the Father is identical to God the Son. In fact, there is extensive literature in uh, the Middle Ages by logicians on precisely how do we get rid of this problem of the transitivity of identity. However, modern logicians don't really care so much about theological questions like that, so we are going to take identity as being transitive. So what we need to do is have rules that capture each of these uh, each of these properties. So let me get up my whiteboard and let's do the rules. So this is the rule for the reflexivity of identity. And it says, if tau is a term, then tau equals tau can be written on line n of a proof. So we've got our proof, might have some assumptions up here, might have some other things going on. And then at line n, we can take any term in our language and write down this. And the justification just is reflexivity. Note that tau doesn't have to have occurred anywhere earlier in the proof. It just has to be something well formed in our language. And note that we don't cite any line. We just write down reflexivity. It's just a brute fact. Ooh, if I had set up my whiteboard properly, I'd be able to do the other ones. Let's see if I do this. Next we have symmetry of identity. And this rule says that if uh, tau one equals tau two occurs on line i of a proof, then you can write down the identity that swaps the order of the terms on another line. So i has to occur before line n, of course. Then on line n, you can write down that tau 2 equals tau 1 with annotation symmetry line i. So again, you've got some bits of your proof. And then eventually, at some line, we've got tau 1 equals tau 2. Don't necessarily know what its annotation was, but it will have some annotation. 
Then here at line n, I can write these down in the opposite order, citing the earlier identity. Transitivity is going to be just as easily defined. So transitivity of identity. This rule says if tau1 equals tau2 occurs on line i of a proof, and tau2 equals tau3 on line j, where i and j are not the same thing, i is less than n, j is less than n, then we can write on line n that the first term equals the third term. And the annotation is transitivity lines i and j. So let's squeeze in here a teeny little sample proof. We've got some things going on. And then at line i, tau 1 equals tau 2. And then at some other line j, tau 2 equals tau 3. Then we are allowed to write down on line n that tau 1 equals tau 3 transitivity i and j. Apologies, it looks like a little bit of my uh, of the writing has gone off the end. If you can't read it, it's just this, the transitivity between i and j. So those are the basic rules of identity. And perhaps in the um, Perhaps in the next video, I will talk a little bit more about these rules because there's actually one more that we need to have that has to do with substitution. So we've talked about substitution with variables and doing substitution instances at the level of formulas. Substituting identities is going to be slightly different. So pay attention, be prepared, but we'll talk about that in the next video. Take care. See you then. Cheers.